So in this civil war, Arthur is told by the Pope and by the Archbishop to, to stop making war on his own knights, and he calls off the war for a truce. But then Lancelot takes the time to go over to France, to retreat from England and go back to France. And Arthur with Gowan now is becoming clannish again. He's falling back into clans, which is what happens at the end of this dissolution of this great thing of the, of the round table. Camelot was a, a society that transcended clannishness. It united clans together so they were no longer warring, so there was no longer this constant internecine warfare between you know, one family versus another, Hatfields versus McCoys, or uh, between uh, the, Ro the Capulets and the Montagues. But here at this civil war now, they're falling back into clannishness, going back into a more primitive way of acting. And Lancelot, who's from France originally, goes back to his holdings in France. And Arthur, with Gowan, comes across the water to besiege him in his own land. And still, Lancelot is reluctant to make war on Arthur. He says, it grieves me terribly that I would make war on this man whom I loved once, who was my friend, who was my brother. He was like my second self. And uh, yet all his knights urge him, you have to do something. You have to make war on this guy at some point because he's tearing up your land. Well, Arthur himself doesn't really want to fight Lancelot. And there's a certain element of, I think, human tragedy here in this story because neither Lancelot nor Arthur really want to make war on each other. But Gawain, who's, who's just hell-bent for leather here, wants to see revenge upon Lancelot. And so he pushes Arthur to continue this war. And family honor dictates that Arthur do so. And so Arthur and Gawain lay siege to the castle of Lancelot, Benwick Castle. And there uh, Lancelot is called out by Gawain. Come out and face me, you coward knight. And all of Lancelot's knights urge him. His kinsmen urge him, you must go out. You have to do something about this guy. And so he goes out and he fights Gawain. And we see here that Gawain, the solar imagery that has come up earlier with Gawain, appears here as well. Because during the fight, Gawain, it says, he waxes in strength until noon. Waxing is increasing in strength. He waxes in strength until noon. And at noon, he begins to wane in strength. So his strength goes down after noon. So he reaches that high point with the sun, and then he begins to lose power as, as he goes on during the day. And he and Lancelot fought, fight all day. And at the end of the day, Lancelot hits him hard and causes a really bad wound to him. I mean, he's taken off the field of battle, and Lancelot goes back to his castle, and, and Gowan goes back to be healed. Well, Gowan is still eager to exact revenge on Lancelot. He says that, uh, I will fight until one of us dies. And consequently, he becomes a sort of an elemental force, a force that, uh, that, that will continue to pursue Lancelot until it seeks its, its goal, its end, which is the death of one of these two men. And he comes back for a second bout, and again, the same thing happens at noon, high point, and then at the end of it, Lancelot hurts him, and he, uh, he's struck down. And finally, uh, the whole battle that occurs here, the end of this civil war occurs, it, that Lancelot, who doesn't want to make war on them, is going to continue defeating Gowan, I think, regularly until Gowan or he get killed, but then Gowan and Arthur get called back to England, and they get called back by a crisis situation happening back home. They have left England essentially unprotected. And so now they get news, suddenly something's gone terribly wrong and they have to go back. And Lancelot, I think, uh, is so distraught by this whole civil war that he doesn't, uh, he doesn't immediately come back to help the king and he doesn't uh, go out to attack the king while the king is leaving. He simply allows them to leave, to, to go back home to their own, to their own household, to their own ki kingdom. I think something that we can take note of here is that Lancelot's character has changed radically here in this part of the story. The beginning of the story, when he was still young, he was very, very eager for fame and for fortune, and he wanted to do great things. Then during the, the story of the Grail, he wrestles with that possibility he's not as good a knight as he thought he was. By this point in the story, it's become pretty apparent to him that his whole life has, um, has fallen apart that all those things of greatness and glory and beauty that he once loved are now f fading away. They've been disrupted. The Civil War has caused this fractioning in the world that he knew before. And so if we're looking at Lancelot as a main character, which I think is a very good thing to do in this story, if we're looking at Lancelot as a main character, he is a man who has developed over the course of this story. 
And part of the philosophical question that Mallory raises here is what does it take to draw a man away from worldly fame and fortune? What does it take to draw anybody away from that, what Mallory seems to say, is an illusionary world? It takes great pain, loss, suffering, I think, uh, the loss of everything that he has known before this. And although Lancelot now is a, is a sadder character, because he's having to fight his own king, he's having to lose his queen, he's having to, to lose uh, the whole court that he loved, although he's a sadder man, he's also a wiser one. He withholds from battle. He doesn't want to fight these men that he once loved. Um, he doesn't rush in to, uh, to situations as he did before. And, I think, he is seeing the, the grail, the image of the court, begin to falter, begin to topple. And he doesn't put out his hand to try and stop it anymore. That's very significant. Because if you recall back during the grail quest, there's that scene where Lancelot goes to try and help the old priest when the grail falters. And he gets blown back by that hot wind and, and, and stunned. I think here the same thing's happening in a different form. The grail in this instance is the, uh, is the queen, is the, is the idea of nobility itself. And the stumbling is the falling apart of the whole court. And Lancelot could do everything in his power to try and save it, to, 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 um, or to fight for his honor, or to, or to uh, make war on the king and take the kingship himself. But he doesn't. Instead, he allows it to happen in a way. He, 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 he resigns himself to the fact that he is not the greatest knight on earth. And I think that that realization is, is stunning and it's, it's, it's remarkable that all this suffering that he's gone through up to this point has led to that realization. He's not God. He's not the Christ. He is not the chosen one. Uh, he is just a man.